So how much have I done to Chadwick then? Not a lot. Well, welcome back to Chadwick TMD um, for a layout update. Um, but what I thought I'd start, uh, have a chat about at the start of this video is firstly where Chadwick TMD is. And you can probably see from the boards there in the corner, Chadwick DMD is on its side and that will form part of this la much larger layout. Chadwick's actually 12 foot by three foot and will form the board across the other side of this room. Whereas these boards here will go across the back. But it won't be just a TMD, so I've been kind of thinking about renaming this channel um, and I've come up with a few thoughts, I thought of New Chadwick, but now it's come across that I thought I might go for Chadwick Parkway. And if you know Bristol area, then there's a Bristol Parkway on the outskirts of Bristol, um, where it isn't just, you know, smack back in the middle in the city centre. So what I'm thinking here is that as this layout, the station here will be sort of going into the countryside with fast lanes going through it, fast track straight through, then Bristol, uh, Bristol Parkway, then um, Chadwick Parkway might become a more reasonable name. And if you kind of think so, or have any strong thoughts, then please leave them in the comments below. And then over the next couple of months, I'll uh, take your advice or perhaps not. Um, but I, th I just feel that TMD isn't the kind of the best explanation of what this layout's about. I've had quite a few questions regarding um, how I shoot these videos and the gear that I use, cameras, lights and that kind of stuff. Um, well, I must confess that um, for a living I do work as a photographer and I also have some video gear, as you probably gathered. Um, but people say, oh, what camera are you using and, you know, what kind of frames per second and all this kind of stuff. And I have another YouTube channel called Charlie Bishop. And what I'd like you to do is if you're into the, the, the more technical side, I've only got 45 subscribers on, on Charlie Bishop, so it's not an active channel. Um, and there's a bit of wildlife stuff on there that I've done in the past with kingfishers because I have a love of kingfishers. It's kind of the, one of the things that makes me go out and, uh, and shoot video. Um, but what I'd like you to do, if you're into, into that, then please subscribe to that channel. And if I can get a few hundred um, subscribers um, along with me, then I'll start to shoot more video, perhaps once a week there, and sort of how-to videos on um, the, finer, the finer points of, of video, whether it be with a video camera or photography for model railway layouts or, you know, shooting stuff with a drone, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's something I have an interest in, not, but it's, not, it's an occupation. Um, but if you'd like to be involved with that, then please subscribe. Um, and there should be a card up here which should link you to that YouTube channel. But it's just simply known as Charlie Bishop. OK. Um, the next point is... In the last couple of weeks, I've been doing several how-to videos. Now, I produce my videos, I try to get them out at 12 o'clock on a Friday. And the, the how-to videos take quite a long time. What I've found is that I'm kind of focusing more on the how-to videos than I am actually in building this layout. So there's got to be some give and take. So what I thought I would try to do is one Friday I do a how-to, and the next Friday I do a layout update, because it will give me then a chance to actually update the layout and get things moving on a little bit. So that's what I'm going to try to do rather than, I think the last three or four videos have all been how to and they've been very well supported and your comments are, are very worthwhile and I thank you for it. But I'm going to try and do a bit more um, model railway building and then, and, uh, and then do the how to videos in between. So uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll stay with me on that. Um, I'm a member of a model railway club and when I spoke to a chap about building this layout much bigger, he said to me, he says, um, yeah, don't forget, you're only on this planet for so many years and you might not actually get around to finishing it. Which kind of, it didn't annoy me, but it kind of brought things home that we don't last forever. And then sometimes in our later years, I'm fast approaching 60, that we embark on building massive layouts that we actually might not finish. And one of the reasons that I haven't um, embarked in, be, in building two helixes for this layout is because by the time I build the helix then the, uh, uh, the fiddle yards going underneath the boards are all the way along with kind of a 360 right around and then the top boards around the top you're probably looking at the best part of five to seven years by the time you get the scenics at, an, at a reasonable standard so that's the reason I'm not building the helix but I will leave provision in for them 
um, but I'm just going to do the boards on top with a lot more scenery to have to so I've got my trains up and running around a reasonable layout and then if I find that I'm still in this house or that you know I've got I've got so far then I'll then go on and build the helix with a, a fiddle yard underneath but until then I'm not going to do that I'm not going to have so much track um, that I don't know what to do with it all because um, I find that we kind of fill a lot of boards with track and there's very little scenery to go around and it doesn't really depict what happens in the real world so that's what I'm going to do I'm not going to expand into multi layers of of, uh, of, of layouts and trains whizzing around I'm just going to keep it on a single level um, but we'll go up and down with the scenery whether through cuttings or hillsides and that kind of stuff so that's why I'm going with that because at the end of the day we might not have enough years to finish the wretched layout in the, in the first place so it's a kind of a I don't know if you have to bear with me on that one I'm sure people will disagree um, but if you do just leave your comments below another point I thought I'd mention is um, is gear addiction and that's I think it's in our sort of the way we are as, 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 as blokes I know 99 and a half percent of the people who watch this video are male so bear with me the half a percent are female but blokes are very gadget orientated and we do like stuff and we go and buy gear we go to model rail issues uh, shows I've got more stuff that I that's still in the box and I know what to do with I I buy you know fences and gates and panels and all sorts of stuff that I've never actually got around to building I haven't even opened the packets and a friend of mine works in a model railway shop and uh, I'm not doing him injustice but he, was, he, he talks quite honestly and openly and mentioning no names he actually gets guys that comes into his shop and they never pay with a credit card or a check or whatever it's always cash I wonder why I wonder I wonder why they're paying with cash that the, the wife at home wouldn't know what they've been up to but it's true we do spend a great deal of money on model railways and sometimes we need to take stock and plan ahead and, and buy as we need rather than buy as we want um, I know in our later years some of us are retired financially you're a little more comfortable you might not have a mortgage anymore and the, and the kids are off you know emigrated to Canada or you know post university and and we've got a little bit more spare cash but um, I'm not alone when I mention that I know a lot of guys who've got a lot of model railway stuff and it's still in their boxes they've got locomotives they've never run um, and, and kits they've never they'll never get around to building so I thought it's just just the thing to be aware that buying model railway stuff can be for blokes an addiction and it's something we just need to keep an eye on I certainly do um, the other thing is what else I want to talk about um, I think that really just takes me down to my to my layout update now um, in the previous layout it was this particular board here that I was talking about and I've made uh, a mistake with a with a point what it was um, I'm taking a point off into a DMU, um, a DMU into the station, but I can't get the DMU back out of the station without it going onto the main line. So I now need to build a double slip to go in there and, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, so I'll show you what I've been up to and, uh, and we'll sort it from there. So just ignoring this, this section here for a moment, um, the way I designed it was there would be um, an up and a down fast lanes that run straight through um, a station that is four tracks wide sort of similar to what to Swindon if you've ever been there so these two tracks will then go on and then up into the into the countryside to serve the to serve the the, uh, the station there will be a platform here and a platform here so um, excuse me <coughs> so passengers can embark and disembark from both that line this one and then this one there will also be I thought a DMU line coming through here which will be a, a kind of a dead end there it'd be no, it wouldn't go straight through it would end and then the station would go on much further but so I thought well if the DMU comes in and then it wants to go back out and then go on well it would have to go back out onto the main line which would obviously snag up the main line so I think the answer is is to replace um, this one here no this one here with a double slip so that it can come back out and then go up if you like onto a track up here and then come back out onto this line here and then go back out without impinging on this on the main line 
Is that right? No, it isn't. No, I got it wrong. Sorry. The double slip goes there, so it would come up and then go out that way into a, into a head shunt and then go back out that way, and therefore the DMU would work. Excuse me, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> So that's the kind of plan. So um, sadly, I've got a, uh, a point motor under there, but I'll rip that one out, get another point motor, change that one and, uh, and take it from there. As a matter of interest, you're probably aware that this is a code 100 layout and I will buy a code 75 double slip because it's an electro frog. I don't, frog. I don't like um, insular frogs. Um, so that track there and this track that goes up here from the double slip will both be in code 75 and I'll just use the um, code 75 to 100 joiners uh, to go in here and here so that remains at 100 and that goes off in 100 if that kind of makes sense. Um, there'll be a slight step down um, to the code 75 track because it's a little bit thinner so I'll have to lift that up. So I hope that kind of makes sense as a, as a refresher. So those are the main up and down lines and those are the lines that feed the platforms as long with that one and there we are right so now i'll show you what's going on underneath this board here um, and hopefully it'll all kind of make sense and this particular board here is one that i've uh, recovered from a previous layout and between this board, which I call board one, and this one, which I call board two, sorry, board three, goes board two. Board two is six and a half feet long. And that is where the station will be. So, um, so, so that's it really. Yeah, quite simply, there'll be a massive board in between this one and that one. And that will be where you, the station layout with all the platforms and buildings and structures and everything else. And so looking at this board, what I've done is I've ripped up all the old track um, and I've laid the cork um, just down as, as, a, as a sheet to where I want it and then I'll cut the cork off um, uh, where it's not required. But there's a road bridge that will go over here and there'll be a pillar in the centre which I've marked out and there's going to be three tracks on that side and two tracks on this side and they will go off up to here where they'll be eventually just the two tracks. If I can just swing that camera around a shade. So there'll be two tracks coming along here. Um, and then the up line then would divide into two. And those will feed the, um, both sides of the platform. Um, it will coming off of this point here where you can see this paper template. Um, there'll be the fast track which will then run straight up into this track here and then go straight through the center of the station off into the countryside. And then there'll be another track coming off, off of here. And then that will split through a curved point into these two rails. One which is the fast coming, obviously it's the fast track coming down. And then this is the one coming out of the station. I'm not a lover of these curved points, I must confess. Um, but if you hit them at speed coming in this direction, then you get less derailments than you do if you come in, in that direction. That's the way I've kind of found them. So hopefully um, that kind of makes sense uh, to you. And as I said earlier, um, it all changes because um, through this centre line here, there will be um, a six foot six board, which will then push these two boards out, out against the walls. And that's where the I'll build the station in between there. And, and I like to recycle or upcycle and this old board here um, served, uh, served well but it's time to breathe some fresh air into it. Um, I'll leave those two outer tracks and hopefully leave this, this archway, um, rebuild it and, uh, and carry on from there. Well that wraps up this short update. As I said at the intro, please subscribe to the Charlie Bishop YouTube channel if you're into photography or videography and uh, I'll try and get some, uh, some uh, how-to videos um, put up there. Um, in the meantime, hopefully between now and two weeks time when, the, when I do the next layout update, I'll get these two boards um, wired up and uh, obviously I've got to get all the points installed in board three and get those into the walls and then I can set about board two and get the, uh, the station track laid out. So uh, hopefully I can crack on with that. So there we are. 
Anyway, in the meantime, as usual, please don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and there should be a video here and here uh, for you to watch. You know you've got time. Thanks a lot. Take care and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Bye bye.